Donnez-moi cette balle. Vous êtes trop petit pour jouer avec une balle. Ça va, ça va. Donnez-moi la balle. Ça va, ça va, ça va. Sure hot, isn't it? Better fix yourself. Court martial spit and polish. Proceed to convene the court. The accused will rise. charge violation of article of war 75 misbehavior before the enemy specification that private william g kirby did at hill 256 in the vicinity of chateau du Lois on or about 7 august 1944 while attached to elements of company f 361st infantry run from the enemy shamefully remain under cover and refuse to carry out the duties and responsibilities of a member of the army of the united states What could he get? Shot. Combat. A Selmer production. Vic Morrow. And Rick Jason. Guest star, Robert Culp. Please, Captain. The accused pleads not guilty to the charge and specification. Does the accused wish to challenge any member of this court? The accused wishes to challenge for cause. I'm sorry, Captain Dugan. Corporal. Get the children out of there. Yes. Hey, you kids, go on, beat it. Proceed, Captain. The accused wishes to challenge for cause Major Daggett and Captain Worcester. Yesterday I overheard in the bar of the Hotel Fascal Major Daggett and Captain Worcester discussing this case. Both officers agreed that if the accused was found guilty, he would deserve the death sentence. Major, do you wish to make a statement? Uh, well, sir, I would just like to say that, uh, well, I never knew the captain here ever went into bar rooms. Uh, Colonel, Captain Wooster and I did talk together, sir, and uh, we did decide the death penalty was possible. Well, Lord only knows all you have to do is turn to page 221 of the manual for a courts martial to find that out, sir. But neither one of us said uh, the death sentence was mandatory or deserved. Captain Wooster. The Major's statement is correct, sir. 
This court will close while a vote is taken on the validity of the challenges. Hey, boy! <laughs> you guys are a sight for sore eyes. Come on in here. Well, Captain, how are you? Hey! Hey, where's the outfit, huh? Well, they're up north about 10 miles. The lieutenant gave us a 48 hour pass to come see you. Good, good. What happened? Everybody thought you were dead in that barge. Ah, takes more than a crowd 88 to blot our old Kirby, you know that. <laughs> of course, now, if you ask me, that's exactly what this court's trying to do. Oh, Captain, uh, I have to admit, I don't like the looks of those two officers you challenged. I kind of think they already made their minds up. Well, if we're sustained, we won't have to worry about them. Well, what if we aren't? Well, then we'll get rid of one of them peremptorily. For what? You see, we're allowed one peremptory challenge. That means that we can have any single member of the court excused. We don't even have to have a reason. All we have to do is say you go and he goes. But uh, one from two, that, that still leaves one. Yes, I'm afraid it does. Kirby. Yeah? Did you do it? What, do what? Did you run? <laughs> well, shoot, yeah, I ran. Uh, I ran right out of front sight of a crowd meat chopper. <laughs> I think I broke the record for the 60-yard downhill crawl. Well, ca Captain, look, you, you can't hang a man for, for running from a machine gun. True, but the man with him, uh, an NCO from Fox Company, Sergeant Metcalf, he says there was no machine gun. Well, did, uh, did anybody check later, I mean, up on that hill? There was no later. The Krauts threw in about a ton of mortars, and Kirby and Metcalf took off. Kirby, now you're... Positive. You sure there was a gun up there? Have I ever lied to you? Oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. About little things, yeah, but not this. I saw there was a gun. Okay. Hey, hey come on now. Get those dumb looks off your faces. Right, this is the best deal I ever had here. Got uh, three squares a day and a good bunk. Cozy room. Okay, Captain, they're ready, sir. Right. Yeah, onward and upward. Well, he's taking it pretty good. Are you kidding? He's got stiff. <laughs> Does the accused wish to exercise his right to one peremptory challenge? The accused challenges Major Daggett. Major Daggett, you are excused. All right, Major. The prosecution calls as its first witness, Sergeant John C. Metcalf. Sergeant Metcalf reports to the president of the court. Raise your right hand. You swear the evidence you shall give in the case now in hearing be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Be seated. State your full name. Sergeant John C. Metcalf, Fox Company, 361st Infantry. Do you know the accused? Yes, sir. Is he in the courtroom? Yes, sir. Please point him out. There, sir. Sergeant, how long have you been in the Army? Almost three years, sir. Have you ever been in combat? Yes, sir, here. Or that Africa. Have you ever received any decorations? Bronze star, silver star, three purple hearts. Objection. Previous record has nothing to do with the issue in point. Oh, but I think it has, Captain. I am quite sure that if the accused had an excellent record that you'd bring that up. Objection sustained. Strike the question and the answer. Now, Sergeant. Please tell the court the circumstances of your first encounter with the accused. 
My squad was advancing toward Hill 256. The first time I saw Private Kirby was when we reached the road which runs along the base of 256. He was in a ditch. Alone, nobody in sight. Soldier. Soldier. Where's your outfit? The thief has lost his sheep. You hurt? I don't think so. Okay. You're invited to a hill climb. I can use a good BAR man. Well, wait, what about my outfit? Well, where are they? I don't know. You stick with me. I'll leave you off that way about 150 yards to take a position. We'll take it from the front. Come on. Come on, I'll get you back to your squad later. Up we go. All right, let's go. Take that hill. Chow, you've been raving about. That's going to be cold, Chow, if you don't need it soon. Sergeant, they're trying to railroad me. Come on, will you? No, I mean, I mean it. Now, are they? You know the Army doesn't railroad anybody. Look, you heard that Metcalf. He said there wasn't a machine gun up there. Sergeant, I saw the thing with my own eyes. All right, what about the three other men in Metcalf's squad? They said they didn't see a machine gun either. Now, how could they? From where they were? Well, they could have heard it. No, they couldn't hear it because there's mortars going off all over the place. Will you, Kirby? It's gonna be all right. Tomorrow you'll tell your side of it. <laughs> yeah. Me, me, private goofball. Tell us about your decorations, private goofball. <laughs> well, sir, let me see. Uh, I was uh, awarded the Order of the Golden Brick for being AWOL more than anybody else in the platoon. Then there was a bronze fist for starting a riot in that French cafe. Who's going to believe me? Can I join you? Kirby's squad leader, aren't you? That's right. Saunders. Well, Saunders, I can't recommend the cuisine here too highly. I guess a little short on rations. That's all right. I'm not very hungry. Oh? It's, uh, heat? Pardon me. Your boy got you down, huh? They're gonna hang him by his toes. Possible. Look, I've seen Kirby in a dozen battles, and he's never run before. Well, that's really uh, very commendable. And why should he start now? Well, I don't know. Uh, I guess some people just get scared. I know he's been scared, but he's never run before. Hey, look, your boy is guilty. That's it. He gets what he deserves. 
You hate him pretty good, don't you? Huh? Huh? No, I don't hate anybody. Why are you so anxious to pin Kirby's hide against the wall? Because the sooner we get rid of the Kirby's, the sooner we're going to win the war. All right, he's one little 25-cent coward of a rifleman, right? So what can he do? He can pull the rug on you so fast that it's over before you ever find out what happened to you. That's what he can do. Blow a whole battle, maybe a whole campaign. You think I'm uh, uh, exaggerating? Well, buddy, these two eyes saw it happen. Well, I'll tell you what else he can do. He can kill your own people for you. I had a Kirby at Normandy. And seven good men are rotting now because he got jelly in his craw. No, my friend, I don't hate. I sure do have bad dreams, though. <laughs> It's open. I'm sorry to bother you, Captain. Well, I figured you might be by. What have you been up to? Well, I just had a talk with Sergeant John C. Metcalf. Oh. Court thinks he's the greatest thing since Sergeant York. Yeah, I know. What about you, Captain? Well, he spins a pretty convincing yarn. In other words, Kirby's guilty? I didn't say that. I know, but is, is, is that what you think? Are you asking me, or are you asking yourself? I don't have to ask myself. I fought side by side with Kirby ever since D-Day. What I want to know is, what can we do for him? Tomorrow I put him on the stand, let him tell his story, and that's it. And nothing else? What else is there? There were two guys on that hill. One of them says there was a machine gun, the other one says there wasn't. Nobody else was around. Yes, there was. The Germans. Your positive view is on Hill 256. He was up there all right. In fact, he was the NCO in charge. Oh, you tell him about Kirby and tell him that we... Tell him that we need his help. Dieser Offizier ist ein Rechtsanwalt. Er verteidigt einen Mann vor einem Kriegsdienst. Er braucht ihre Hilfe. Bruno Müller, Oberfeldwebel. 0584188. He says his name is Bruno Miller. His rank is Master Sergeant, and his serial number is 054914. Tell him this has nothing to do with the war. Tell him we want to find out if there was a machine gun up there. That's all. Es hat gar nichts mit dem Krieg zu tun. War da ein Maschinengewehr auf dem Hügel 256? Bruno Miller, Oberfeldwebel, 058418. You tell him that a man's life depends on this. Just tell him that. Bruno Miller, Oberfeldwebel, 058418. Is this the only prisoner you took up there? The only one. Okay. Take him back. Hops. Thanks, sir. Was there a machine gun up there on that hill? My name is Bruno Miller, Oberfeldwebel. 058418. There's got to be something, Captain. Prayer, maybe. Look, when a, when a weapon fires, it leaves, it leaves empty shells. No good. I already thought of that. Why, who'd go around a battlefield picking up empty shells, Captain? The court won't buy it. Why not? Well, supposing we found a big pile of machine gun shells on Hill 256. How could we prove they were fired at Kirby? Those hills have been fought over for weeks. Well, well wouldn't it create some doubt? Not enough. Well, suppose... It was one battle. Suppose, suppose, suppose. It's possible. But not very probable. There's been a lot of fighting in that sector. Well, we'll see. Let's see now. Chateau du Loire. Oh, yes, here we are. Hill 256. Hmm. That'll be book four. Hmm. What is it, sir? Well, this particular piece of terrain, this hill 256, 
There seems to have been only one engagement there. When? The 7th of August. You feel like taking a right, Captain? Sounds like a very good idea, Sergeant. Oh, not if you have a Hill 256 in mind. We've been doing a lot of shifting of units there for the past three days. Well, who's there now, sir? Uh, British, Germans, our people. I can't really give you an honest answer. The best I can do at the moment is call it the no man's land. Well, I guess there's nothing we can do. Is there? Somewhere. According to the latest reports, this whole surrounding area is one big question mark. <laughs> I don't like questions. Are the Germans there, or aren't they? The Russian intelligence doesn't even know. <laughs> Every time they don't know something, you can count on 20 Panzer Divisions. 20 Panzer Divisions? Where? Oh, we're just joking, Corporal. <laughs> 20 Panzer Divisions, that's uh, some joke. Searching under the daylight. So, so, Kirby's going to be sitting in the witness chair at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. You couldn't mean. I mean, you wouldn't intend to come back in broad daylight, would you? You have any other suggestions? Look, Sarge, you know the odds to come back from there to here in broad daylight. Whatever they are, they're better than Kirby's. How about it? Here you go. You got the stripes. Wait a minute. You know I can't order you to do anything the army wouldn't authorize. <sighs> Makes me mad. Every time you give me a choice, there isn't a choice at all. the only thing. You know where we are. The least they could do is put up a sign. You're now entering no man's land. Snowflake. We're Americans. Ah, you know. And I don't suppose you'd mind reciting the countersign. Uh, we're from the 361st. King Company. We're on a secret mission. Well, now, isn't that mysterious? Move. Uh-huh. Well, that's about it, Lieutenant. I figure we're about a mile from Hill 256 when your men stopped us. Sounds fantastic enough to be true, sir. This man speaks with a French accent. Well, yes, he's a Cajun, you see. Uh, he's from New Orleans, and most Cajun families in New Orleans, they speak. I'm aware of that. We do have schools in England, you know. I think they're telling the truth, sir. Do you really, Sergeant? 
Well, suppose you get on the phone to the 361st for a little verification. Ah! Uh -huh. Sir, we are from the 361st. Now you're free to go. Thank you, Lieutenant. I suggest you get back to your own unit. Oh, well, that's what we'll do, sir. Don't be glib with me, Sergeant. I'm well aware the moment you get out of here, you'll continue with your preposterous scheme. Well, there was one of your men, wouldn't you? No. It's that way, lads. Just follow your noses and don't forget your eyes and ears. The signs, snowflake, and the counter signs, iceberg. Right. Thanks a lot, huh? Thanks a lot, pal. Good luck! Heiss and not for these all right. Flair that was. Probably theirs. Let's go.
this it? Yeah, it's around here somewhere. Are you sure? <laughs> right. All we have to do now is find us some German shells. Yeah. This way. All right. One blue plate special coming up. Coffee's not bad. Thanks. You find anything yet? Found a lot of our stuff. But I haven't found a German shell yet. I think we're too far to the right. Now, what we need is another three days. Hey, Sarge! Somebody got out of feel a fire. Good, let's go. Hey! I think we found what we're looking for. Here. Are you okay? Okay. I haven't felt better in two days. Here, look at that. The court is now in session. All parties to the trial who were present when court adjourned are again present in court. Does the defense have an opening statement? No, sir. The defense calls as a witness Private William G. Kirby. Pins. O'Keefe got hit, and then Mika got hit, Lieutenant Hanley got hit. People just screaming and kicking all over the place.
nobody ever invented words for a thing like that, sir. How long did the barrage last? Five minutes. Five hours, I, I, I don't know. And what did you do? I got sick. I felt like I was going to die. And then? And the world just blew up, sir. Next thing I knew, I was lying there in that ditch. My head felt like I'd been run over by a steamroller. I couldn't move. I couldn't think. I couldn't even remember what day it was. <laughs> Soldier. Soldier. Where's your outfit? A little boat beef has lost his sheep. You hurt? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, you're invited to a hill climb. You the VA army. Oh, wait. Wait, well, what about my outfit? Well, where are they? I don't know. I, I think... You stick with me. The three of you out that way about 150 yards. I'll go up the middle with him. Come on. Wait. I'll get you back to your outfit later. Come on. Give it a word. Up we go. Let's go. We take that hill. Get back. We were walking right into it, I swear. You're a liar. He's the one that's a liar. There was a gun up there. Kirby, I warn you, any further outbursts will not be tolerated by this court. Don't you mean you thought you were staring into a muzzle blast? No. You know, of course, that uh, Sergeant Metcalf said he didn't see it. Yes, sir. Hmm. How do you explain that? I don't know, sir. Doesn't it strike you a little odd that uh, one man can see a machine gun and another man can't? Sir, it was there. I swear it was. Then why weren't you hit? I don't know, sir. There were bullets all around me. But you weren't even nicked. No, sir. I see. First, you are blown through the air by an 88 shell with no more consequence than an aching head. And then a machine gun fires point blank and misses you completely. I know it sounds crazy. It also sounds a little crazy that Sergeant Metcalf wasn't hit when he tried to drag you out of that ditch. Sir, the gun must have stopped. Sometimes they jam up. And sometimes they aren't even there. Sometimes a man gets so scared he dreams them up. No, I swear! I object. I object to the Major's assumption. And I object to his abusive treatment of the accused. You're sustained, Captain. This court will recess until 1300. Hi, Kirby. Uh. Brought your lunch here. Well, go on, open it up. <laughs> They're a little stale, I'll pick them up a month ago. <laughs> These little things are the one we're fired at you. It's true, Kirby. 
These two lunatics went out to Hill 256. I ought to have them court martialed. <laughs> hey, Captain, does this mean? We still have to convince the court. Don't worry. I'll do it. Would you describe your exact duty, Sergeant? Well, sir, I'm in charge of the Ordnance Battalion Small Arms Section. We do the repairing and the maintenance for the entire division. How long have you been in ordnance work? Ever since I first joined, sir. Twelve years. Mm -hmm. Will the prosecution accept this witness as an ordnance expert? The prosecution will. Now, Sergeant, would you identify this for the court? This is the empty casing of a German 8mm ball cartridge, sir. You're sure of that? Positive, sir. They actually measure out at 7.59 millimeters, but they're classified as 8. Now, would you identify this? This is a piece of link, sir. The kind that Crouch used to belt ammo. So, if you found a pile of these mixed in with a pile of these, what would you think? I'd think they were fired from a German machine gun, sir. And how many of these do you estimate were in the emplacement? Between 100 and 150, sir. Mm -hmm. Now, getting back to the emplacement itself. You're absolutely certain it was on Hill 256? Yes, sir. I made a positive orientation with map and compass. And how did you finally escape from Hill 256? Well, we crawled right through the underbrush until we were out of sight, sir. Then we crossed the road and ran, well, right through the British lines. The British, the French, the Americans. No one fought on Hill 256 before or after 7 August. No, Captain. No one. Your witness. No questions. Are there any questions by the court? The witness is excused. It is the opinion of the prosecution that the charges against the accused should be dismissed. The prosecution therefore requests a recess to acquaint the convening authority with the evidence that has just been presented. Court will recess until further notice. That's it, Captain? You, you mean I'm sprung? That's it. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. That's all right. Kirby! Huh? Oh, Kate! <laughs> Major Hendricks just called us in and dismissed the charge. Well, That's great. thanks to you guys, and you, Captain. I mean it. Uh, talk about coming through in the clinches. I just don't know where to begin. What do you want? You want to say you're sorry? Knock you want to apologize? Knock, knock it off. I didn't see any machine gun up there, Kirby. I didn't see it. I swear it. Not see a machine gun. Well, people see things that don't exist. I guess it's possible to not see something that does exist. So long, Cross. Especially if you spent the last two years of your life charging German gun positions and leading men you care about straight into the face of rifle and machine gun fire. Not even stopping for a moment to think about being afraid. There goes a man so conditioned to being brave, he can't even see danger when it's staring right down his throat. What's going to happen to Metcalf now, Sarge? I don't know. 
Probably get a rest, maybe a month or two somewhere. And then? Went back to a foxhole. Night patrol. Frontal assault on a hill. Let's go home.